Hey, yo, welcome to O'Culture. I am Ryan Peverly. Got a little bonus audio here for you from a recent conversation with Eileen Day McCusick. I believe she was episode 14, talking about tuning the human biofield and the electric universe and other cool shit like that. Here in this bonus audio, this is right when Eileen and I connect on Skype. We're just chatting it up for a few minutes before the interview, and then... There's a few minutes from after the interview as well. We're talking about living near Bernie Sanders, meeting Electric Universe pioneer Walt Thornhill, being accepted into the Electric Universe community as a woman. And then we get into some talk about telluric currents, ley lines, and dragon lines, as well as a bit about the triple DNA helix. So without further rambling, here's some bonus audio. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey, Eileen. What's going on? Uh, not too much. I just got back from a two-week trip. I was in uh, Nashville and Denver and San Diego, and I just got back yesterday, so I'm happy to be in Vermont, even though it's cold here. I was going to say, that sounds like a much warmer trip. Yeah. Actually, surprisingly, Nashville was as cold as Vermont, which really? I didn't expect. Yeah, but it's sunny here, and I love Vermont, so I'm happy to be home. Home of uh, Bernie Sanders, right? Yeah, he lives just a couple miles from me. It's okay. Yeah, yeah I've met cool. him a few times. I mean, almost everybody who lives in Vermont has met Bernie because he, he's all, just always been on the road, you know. He goes to every town in Vermont and speaks in pizza parlors and, you know, he's just, he's a man of the people for sure. Well, I was going to, okay, okay. Now, this is way off topic, and but I'm just curious then, is... Is he like a real guy? Does he really exist? It's just like they live in a different world, it seems. No, he's, he's real. really ordinary. I mean, you know, I've shook his hand. I mean, he's definitely, he's real. He's approachable. He's nice. He's got grandkids. I mean, he's, he's very modest. He lives in a modest home. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's wonderful. You know, and it's so bizarre for those of us in Vermont who've, you know, met him and all that to see what happened, you know, the way he kind of took the world stage somewhat unexpectedly. Yeah. And it's just tragic, I think. You know, I think he was threatened, quite honestly. Oh, well, there was that one photo of him, like, he had a bruise on his face at the DNC. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. Or he, like, had some some sort of weird, like, cut on his face, like, the day after he gave his speech and... Yeah, I would imagine he was threatened because there's yeah. no way that dude would have lost against Trump, you know? No, he wouldn't have. And, you know, you look at the thugs, you know, that, uh, <laughs> you know, the oil deals and the, they're just all mafia. I mean, it's just they're all just a bunch of thugs. And, you know, oh, well, it is what it is. But, you know, it's good to know. I feel like he he got something accomplished. So, well, I think we'll he woke see. a lot of people up, especially young people, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, do you have any questions for me before we get going then? Ryan, did you find out about me from the Thunderbolts podcast? Um, no. I have listened to it, but it was several years ago. Were you on it? Uh, yeah, I was on a Thunderbolts podcast uh, a couple months ago. So a whole bunch of EU people sort of discovered me through that. Oh, a couple months ago. Okay. I didn't know they were doing new episodes. Yeah, they do a weekly one. I think, or a monthly one at least. I thought, okay, well, the one that I'm subscribed to might not be the right one then because it hasn't been updated since, like, 2013. Oh, yeah, no. (laughs) (laughs) So I've heard all those, but that was, like, the original podcast they did. So I guess if they're doing a new one, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, it's a YouTube thing. Oh, it's a YouTube thing. Okay, so it's not on iTunes or anything like that. Who's hosting it? Oh, gosh, I don't even remember, quite frankly. Is it Wall Thornhill? No, it's no? not Wall. Okay. No. no, although on my po- on the podcast that I'm on, Wall does preface it. Like, Wall's involved. You know, Wall kind of does a little intro. He didn't conduct the interview, but he does a little intro about how he got to know me and, like, why i am been taken into the EU circle. So, Well, that's an interesting component to this, and I didn't know that you had been taken in. That's really cool. So when we yeah. get to that... Get me- this. Here, listen to this. So I'm going to be speaking on the main stage at the EU conference this coming year. Last year, there wasn't a single woman on the main stage. And I'm going to Australia in January to teach a few classes, and I'm going to stay at Wall's house for two nights. What? That's like a really big deal. Yeah, I know. Wall and I love each other. We just just really get along (laughs) great. I gave him a session when, uh, when I was at the conference. I spoke on the, I did like a breakout talk at the conference this past year. 
And then they were like, oh, you're awesome. You should be on the main stage. <laughs> so, um, but then, yeah, well, I did a session for him. So he wants me to come and like treat his whole family. And, oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. Why were you even invited to be part of the community in the first place? Well, <clears throat> when I first, you know, discovered Plasma, um, I managed to turn um, – turn my research on electric universe and plasma into an independent study for my master's degree. And I wrote a book called cosmology for kids as an assignment for one of my other classes. And I reached out to wall by email. And this was probably in 2011, 2010 or 2011. And I was like, Hey, I'm writing this book. I'm trying to distill, you know, EU into a kid thing. Um, can you take a look at it and, uh, you know, give me some um, some feedback? And so we ended up just developing like a, an email relationship. And as I was, you know, learning about EU and then as I was getting into my thesis and then my book, I just needed a clarification occasionally on points and he would provide it. And so I'd been wanting to go to the conference for years, but it never fit into my schedule. And finally, this past year, I was like, oh, my God, it's going to work and I'm going to go. But it just so happened that um, there's not a lot of women in the EU community, but it just so happened that there was this convergence of women who'd been exposed to me who um, who got the woman, Susan Sherratt, who organizes the breakout sessions. They gave her my book and so Susan invited me to do the breakout and I did a demo and then Wall came to my talk and he was like, well, of course you need to be on the main stage. So it's a little bit of a risk for them because, you know, EU is trying so hard to gain uh, credibility scientifically, you know, and I'm like this hippie chick from Vermont who waves tuning forks around people. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, is that when you break down the science in your book, and we'll get to that, it makes okay. logical scientific sense. That's the main point here. Is right. That's you, what everybody says. I mean, yeah. that that's just the kind of sum total. Everyone who gets exposed to my work, they're like, oh, this makes sense. I'm like, that makes sense to me too. You know. So. <laughs> right. No problem. I just didn't get to one question, and it was about is it um, telluric currents? Is that is that how you say that? Telluric currents, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, I thought that was an interesting thing. Do you have maybe two minutes to explain that to me and how it relates back to like ley lines and things like that? Sure. So a telluric current, you know, it's interesting. In my research on plasma, you know, and, and when I research, I'm like a terrier going after a rat, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very determined um, character. And it took months of researching plasma before I finally came across the concept of a telluric current. And that is basically that just like we, you know, water flows all over the surface of the earth and different kinds of, you know, rivers and lakes and streams and creeks and brooks and, you know, um, so does electromagnetic energy that it actually, you know, flows all over the place and that, that it's actually been mapped. And I came across something that said that the early telegraph lines actually use telluric currents to power them so now all of those maps you can't find them on the internet and boy did i try but then i discovered that they're actually owned and you know who they're owned by the oil companies the oil companies the oil companies own all the maps of the telluric currents and then they suppressed information about it you know just like tesla was sort of written out of the history books uh, our understanding of the electromagnetic nature of life and that the, the we're surrounded by energy. That is what Tesla was tapping with his Wardenclyffe to- Tower. I think that's what it was called. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where he's going to harness energy from the ether and broadcast it for free. Like, people are like, oh, economically, since oil companies rule the world, they don't want you knowing about Tesla. They don't want you knowing about electromagnetic energy. They don't want you knowing about telluric currents. And anything that is esoteric esoteric that might have other names for this like ley lines or dragon lines is dismissed as woo woo i mean there's very intentional disinformation going on here and so i pretty much concluded that it has to be the same thing you know that uh i've actually found uh, a dragon line a very so my understanding of the difference between the terminology is that what we call a dragon line is like a wild line and they tend to have serpentine movement just like water does 
Whereas a ley line is one that has been harnessed and, um, and domesticated, if you will, like a canal, right? So with a canal, we make the water go in a state straight line in order to make use of it. So a ley line is that, and and you can use stone circles or the opposite of a stone circle, which is like, um, I can't remember what they're called, but like the Washington monument is one like a tall Mm -hmm. stone, right? So those also harness, um, these electromagnetic currents, they can be doused. They can be found with dousing rods. Uh, when you step in one, especially, you know, on a day like today, um, when we're at a solstice, anytime when the electromagnetic flows are high, if you're sensitive and tune in on that level, it actually feels like you're stepping into a swift moving river. You can actually feel all of the electrons whizzing by you. So I believe that th- it is the exact same phenomenon. You know, what is called a dragon line or a ley line is a telluric current. Does that tie into like you mentioned this serpentine energy? Does that tie into like our DNA and yeah, everything the- moves in spirals. I mean, that's just how things move. Water moves in spirals. Uh, blood moves in spirals. Uh, your DNA moves in spirals. Those Birkeland currents that travel through space. Um, esoteric, you know, the Vedic perspective of the Ida and the Pingala, the two currents, the downcoming energy that we would call positive, the upgoing energy that we would call negative, that cross going through the body where chakras are, uh, all, all moves in spirals. It's the nature of movement through the ether. It's an important thing, you know, torsion, spirals, tiller current. This is all important stuff that nobody knows about. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, and but you see it every time you see an ambulance, you know, with the caduceus. You you see this this symbol everywhere of of these two snakes that are curling around, you know, like a, a center pole almost, and it just looks like you know that's what our DNA looks like. That's what sound waves look like. Absolutely, and you know, I had a a real insight in a meditation once that DNA is actually a triple helix, not a double helix. And it would have to be because you can't braid anything with two strands. You actually need three strands. And just like in the caduceus, you've got that center pole, which is the neutral, positive, negative, and neutral. So that DNA actually is three-stranded. It's just that that third strand is invis- it's invisible and neutral. Oh, you know, I have heard the triple helix hypothesis. I didn't really know how it worked. But so is that is that neutral pole inside of us or is it external? both it's everywhere (laughs) okay great well hey i don't want to keep you too much longer thanks for your time again eileen i'll have this online in the next few weeks i will send you a link when it's available okay sounds great i look forward to sharing it awesome thank you so much take care bye bye all right my thanks again to eileen day mccusick for hanging out she's a fun gal and of course, my thanks to all you fun gals and guys out there for stopping by to hang out for a few minutes. I'm assuming you have heard episode 14 with Eileen in its entirety if you listen to this. If not, go back and check it out. And if you haven't yet heard episode 15 with Craig Smedley, it's a nice companion piece to the chat I had with Eileen. And speaking of companions, I have a very special Valentine's Day episode coming up with someone known across the interwebs as High Poets Society. We'll be talking poetry, cannabis, and that elusive L word. Until then, this is O'Culture. I am Ryan Peverly, reminding you to love yourself, think for yourself, and question authority.